Hello and welcome to a new hacking project. And no, it's not about the previous charger. That has another task today. I'll talk about that in a minute. No, this is about the Renault Zoe drive train. Now let me put the camera on a, tri on a tripod and uh, I will try to explain some stuff. So this motor is a bit special in that it has no permanent magnets, but it has um, uh, electrical excitation. So there's uh, two slip rings inside and then a coil on the rotor and that uh, creates a variable magnetic field. And I think that's quite handy. And this is the cable delivering that. And this being orange indicates that it's uh, being fed from high voltage actually. Okay, then we have the usual three phase cables and then a rather unusual fourth cable and that's actually the neutral point um, which Renault use for charging. So um, there's another box back there that uh, essentially rectifies mains and does power factor correction and then has a switcher and that uses the inductance of the motor, all three coils in parallel um, to smoothen out the charging current. And then ultimately the capacitor up here gives it the last finishing touch to have nice DC current. Here we've got our DC input and that's about as standard as it gets. And now comes the strange stuff. Um, there's two equally color coded and equally um, well connector coded uh, cables coming out here that connect one connects here in the back and the other connects in the front and I thought okay well it's probably temperature and resolver but if you measure into either of these you will find there's not the usual resolver I don't know 10 ohm 20 ohm resistances so uh, I gotta study some more what's up with that at the bottom here uh, this inverter let me just bring it closer to it just to show you how small it actually is it's quite amazing so that is the inverter. Yeah, so at the bottom it's got a DC-DC converter. And I've connected this to a rather, I think that's from the ancient Polo. To a rather ancient 12-volt uh, battery. And uh, currently um, there is no DC voltage on it. And I'm feeding some supply current with my lab power supply. And some CAN messages with Savvy CAN. Um, that I got, let's say, donated from a guy called Patrick. He recorded it from his Zoe. And from all we know, the VIN of the donor vehicle is uh, also within the CAN messages, and we found at least one instance of it. And yeah, patched in the VIN of the donor vehicle of this motor, but that made absolutely no difference. Um, win or no win, what we can do is uh, doing some DC-DC converting um, and I will just demonstrate this to you. I promised to talk about this. Uh, this is uh, actually the rich man's charger, but now it just acts as a boost converter. So I've disabled all the regulation and instead um, I'm giving it a constant duty cycle. So it turns the 50 volt from my test pack back there into 330 volts. That's uh, more usable by the inverter. And I've established that the boost, uh, the DC-DC converter starts DC-DC at 190 volts. And yeah, I don't know what the inverter does because it doesn't do anything. Good, back on the tripod and I will just show you how it's DC-DC converting. Yeah, and we find it's uh, supplying 3 amps into our battery here. And see how many volts that is. Probably not seeing much. Yeah, so it is currently outputting 13.5 volts. And here we are up at the desk. Um, things upside down now, so we've got this reface. Outputs here, DC here, and the next side DC output here. We'll take a look inside in a second. 
but let's just uh, see that we can pull the same trick here. Mm, so this is the first thing that got me. So this is the main canvas, the white and the, I don't know, beige maybe. And then this is some auxiliary canvas, which is brown and white. White is always can high, and I think this is just for diagnosis. Well, <laughs> as far as I can know anything. And yeah, here we've got the equally color-coded resolver, whatever. I've got some documentation over there that I'm going to read next. And yeah, and we've got just uh, one red wire that goes to our positive uh, logic supply. And then we've got the ground just uh, strapped to the inverter case here. There's no ground pin on the on this connector. Right, and you see, with that hooked up, it pulls absolutely no current at all. Now, if we find our savvy can here and press playback, I just keep pointing you at the lab supply. So I'm pressing playback now, and boom, it jumps live. And then if it had any high voltage, it would be um, enabling the DC-DC converter now and do DC-DC conversion. And if you've seen the video by Mike's Electric Stuff, which I will link in somewhere, uh, you will know that you can only split the bottom and top half of the case. If you unbolt these, um, well, not hex screws, but what do you call that? Five, well, it's basically got five edges. So no uh, standard tool fits in them. So basically we more or less drilled them out. And then hidden behind here is uh, some Torx 20 screws that connect the DC bus from the bottom half to the top half for the DC-DC converter and the exciter circuit. Good, let's crack it open. All right, here it is all opened up and um, I'm playing back can, back can messages to it right now. Um, yeah, so it's live. Anyway, what we see here is on the left side we have only the inverter parts. So we've got the, the RGBTs on the bottom layer there being liquid cooled. The capacitor is all the way down at the bottom. And then here we've got the gate drive board and it's connected with some flat flex to the main board. And then below the main board we've got the DC-DC converter board. And then here in the front, we've got the exciter board, which, um, yeah, it's got a, an H, a H bridge configuration. I don't know if they vary the polarity of the exciter, exciter winding. Well, they could in theory. Yeah, what I've noticed, I have actually run the Zoe motor with a some other inverter, and by feeding it some constant uh, current into the X into the rotor. And it turns out when you start the field uh, current, this actually feeds back into the rotor as well. And so the lab power supply was like supplying no current, current, no current, current. It all looked quite wacky. It looked a bit smoother when I supplied it with a battery instead. So yeah, I'm not quite sure about the theory of operation of such an exciter winding. Good, I will take off the main control board and then we will take a look at the DC-DC converter board and maybe the main control board as well. Good, here we are one layer below and I'm not going to take it apart any further because I think now it becomes difficult to do. We have to unsolder stuff and yeah. We're not too interested in what's below here and also uh, Mike has already done that. So a lot of board-to-board -board interconnects here. I've uh, loosened two flat flexes and then also there's uh, another interconnect going into the DC-DC converter board with a lot of pins. Um, I'm actually hoping not too many of them are actually being used for anything. And then we've got another board-to-board -board interconnect over here, but that just connects to the, you know, the various input cables. Um, there's some circuitry on here as well, probably just some local filtering. Um, yeah, not too worried about that. It's got a transformer here, and then it's got the inevitable FPGA or some other programmable expensive logic device. And I'm hoping it's not too smart, so if you supply the right signals here, it's just going to start DC-DC converting. 
Yeah, the inverter control board is also quite, I would like to call it, enterprisey. It doesn't even fit on the screen here. Uh, so we've got the inevitable and now shadowed. Let's see if we can remove the shadow. Here we go. Uh, Infineon Tricore that probably does the motor control, and we've got another Altera FPGA doing things. They could have probably achieved easier. And yeah, some more stuff, some planar transformer for power supplying um, something. Um, what I have seen is the the gate drive power uh, that comes over here is 15 volts. So apparently it's being stepped up. So this could be one task for this rather large um, planar transformer. Um, I will try to ring out what, what voltages are being applied here to this connector to at least be able to run the DC-DC converter without this control board. Um, because that's currently the plan. Um, I don't... There's a lot of talk about all the immobilization that Renault does to, to not have you drive away in the car or have you swap around motors into different cars without them authorizing it so there might be a lot of stuff going on in the can bus that i don't really feel like uh, figuring out so i might actually save time by redesigning this top board so that means i have to ring out the various signals to the skate drive board i have to ring out the signals to the dc dc converter board and also the signals to this exciter board yeah although um yeah, I'm not really sure. By the cable diameter, it doesn't look like the exciter current is really a very high current, maybe 10 amps or so. And I have checked if you feed like 48 volts into the um, into the rotor, you, you already arrive somewhere around 10 amps. So I do consider maybe just running it off the stepped up 12 volt. Yeah, but just, that's all talk for now. Um, the important stuff is getting the gate drive board awake and the DC-DC converter awake, and then we will see about excitation. So yeah, I will definitely follow up on this. This is a customer project, in fact. A guy has, uh, will put this in his Land Rover. And um, yeah, it seemed like a fun task to reverse engineer it, and let's hope it is actually fun. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for more Renault Zoe content. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.